that kills from yon far country blows. What are those blue remembered hills? What spires, what farms are those? That is the land of lost content. I see it shining plain. The happy highways where I went and cannot come again. a traveller from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert, and on the pedestal these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings, look on my works ye mighty and despair. Nothing besides remains, round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. If Liverpool did not exist, it would have to be invented. Mirbach. we hate, then hate the place we love. We leave the place we love, then spend a lifetime trying to regain it. Come closer now and see your dreams. Come closer now and see mine. No meat on Friday, confession on Saturday, emerging cleansed and pleasing to God. Mass on Sundays and holy days of obligation. Despite my dogged piety, no great revelation came, no divine balm to ease my soul, just years wasted in useless prayer. If I pray long enough, I will be forgiven. If I am forgiven, I will be made whole. All I'll need, then, is the girl. Suddenly I knew, suddenly I thought, it's all a lie. Paradise betrayed. There was no God, only Satan, sauntering behind me with a smirk, saying, I'll get you in the end. Tu es Petrus. You're a Brick Pete. Here people married. Here people died and were buried. In deconsecrated Catholic churches, now made into restaurants as chic as anything abroad. Now the congregation can eat and drink in the sight of God, who will no doubt disapprove of cocktails in Babylon. Is this happiness? Is this perfection? As you are now, we once were. James Joyce. They 
that go down to the sea in ships and that do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders of the deep. Anno Domina. Removed from the sight of happier classes, poverty may struggle along as it can. Friedrich Engels. Leicester North End 2, Blackpool 3. Everton 2, West Ham United 0. Leicester City 0, Leeds United 2. Manchester United 3. On slow Saturdays, when football, like life, was still played in black and white and in shorts as long as underwear, when it was still not venal, when sportsmen and women knew how to win and lose with grace and never to punch the air in victory. Match over, pea soup made, my mother calling from the kitchen, my eldest brother listening to the football results in front of the Bakelite radio, marking his coupon, hoping to win millions. Accrington Stanley, Sheffield Wednesday, Hamilton Academicals, Queen of the South. And on even slower Sundays, when it felt as if the whole world was listening to the light programme, Kenneth Horne, promptly at two o'clock, and long before the repeal of the Sexual Offences Act, would visit two of his I very special reason, friends. Very uncomfortable it was. And I was uh, recommended to a fashionable firm of solicitors in Lincoln's Inn. The brass plate on the door read, Berna Law. Hello, anybody there? Oh, hello, I'm Julian. This is my friend Sandy. I've got my articles and he's taken silk. Frequently. Mm. <laughs> well, Miss Thorne, how nice to Valdi or Dolly Aldeek again. Oh, what brings you trolling in here? Oh, can you help me? I've erred. Yeah, we've all erred, Ducky. Yeah. It's common knowledge, isn't it, Joe? Oh, uh, well, will you take my case? Well, it depends on what it is. We've got a criminal practice that takes up most of our time. Mm. Yes, but apart from that... But the law prescribed and was anything but tolerant, as when, contemporaneously, two gay men were arrested and convicted and were to be made an example of, and the judge said to them before he was passing sentence, not only have you committed an act of gross indecency, but you did it under one of London's most beautiful bridges. Showplace of the North, the Ritz Theatre, Birkenhead, again presents a replica royal film performance. Hooray for Hollywood, that's gooey bally hooly Hollywood, where any office boy or young mechanic... At seven, I saw Gene Kelly in Singing in the Rain and discovered the movies, loved them and swallowed them whole. girl can be a top girl if she pleases the tired business man. And my love was as muscular as my Catholicism, but without any of the drawbacks. Musicals, melodramas, westerns, nothing was too rich or too poor for my rapacious appetite, and I gorged myself with a frequency that would shame a sinner. But soon, darker pleasures. At 15, I saw Dirk Bogard in Victim and discovered something entirely different. And when I was not at the movies, on Friday nights, I was at the Liverpool Stadium watching the wrestling. 
Not for its pantomimic villainy, but for something more illicit. And in short, I was afraid. As I struggled with my adolescent desires, as I waited at the top of the aisle, as the wrestlers swaggered up from the ring, their trunks tight across the buttocks, I could feel their body heat as I furtively touched a back or a thigh, choking with schoolboy guilt and trembling with the fear of the wrath of God. Oh, save me from those dark desires which thrill and compel. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Caught between canon and the criminal law, I said goodbye to my girlhood. Here I wept, wept and prayed until my knees bled, but no succor came, no peace granted. Here was my whole world. Home, school, the movies, and God. You who damn but give no comfort, why do I plead? Why do you not respond, angel eyes? Jesus mercy, Mary help. Lull me to safety. Between sleeping and waking, earth does not revolve, and slow turns a life of meager timbre, of dullest breath. Between birth and dying, some lovely moments grow, and sorrows not known until tomorrow cloud the happy hours spent dreaming in the sun. Between joy and consolation, no easy path, some flights of fancy, some colour, glorious old Hollywood, small comic England, black and white. Between loving and hating, the real journey starts. Let go the latter, embrace the former, then fall to heaven on a gentle smile. Between waking and sleeping, the earth resumes its turn. The soft light fills the room. The nightly demons perish from the bed, and all humanity braves another day. Well, we used to have one another house and go to wash house. To wash and for anyone to take off. Nathan, it was safe. Oh, it's all right, but you know the smell of smoke. <laughs> and then, of course, my mother died on Christmas Eve. And she left me 14, a little baby, 12 months old. And another one there, four. My dad stayed with us eight weeks. And then he got a ship and went away and left us. So he, of course, he died after, you know. Then I had more trouble on my plate, like my husband never, ever got much work. And I've had to work all my life. But thank God, God's been very good to me and his holy mother. I found my love by the gasworks croft Dreamed a dream by the old canal Kiss my girl by the factory wall Dirty old town Dirty old town I heard a siren from the dock Saw a train set the night on fire Smell the spring on the sulphured wind 
Dirty old town Dirty old town The year moves towards November. Bonfire night, a penny for the guy, someone singing, keep the home fires burning. As Jimmy Preston and me, the only ones left now, roast potatoes on sticks. We sit, quiet at the last. Jimmy Preston, who was a real boy and whom I envied. Jimmy Preston, who once put his hand on my shoulder and I didn't want him to remove it. Don't go in just yet. Please. Not just yet. But he does. Twilight and evening bell. And after that, the dark.
when we got married, he tore it in two. Oh, gee, I love him, I can't deny it. I'll be with him wherever he goes. I would have liked to have worked down, but that blew me out <laughs> because I was old. It's a sin to grow old, you know. We had an old lady here, and um, she, everybody would run and get her a cup of tea, and they'd wait on her and do all those little things, but she'd always say, nobody wants me. Well, I mean, if you take that attitude, you can't expect anyone to want you, can you? Oh, watch and pray, watch and pray. Do you remember, you who are no longer young, and you who still are, do you remember the months of November and December? Wet shoes and leaking galoshes, and for the first time, chilblains, with Christmas in the air. God was in his heaven, and oh, how I believed, oh, how fervent I was. And on Christmas Eve, pork roasting in the oven, the parlour cleaned with fruit along the sideboard, a pound of apples, tangerines in tissue paper, a bowl of nuts, and our annual exotic pomegranate. Do you remember? Do you? Will you ever forget? <laughs> Happy days. My mother, generous with her small nest egg of 25 pounds, borrowed from the Leon Lend. Love and cellophane. My brothers, with their made-to-measure suits, bought on HP, my sisters and a dab ascent, maybe only evening in Paris, but making it seem as if the whole world was drenched in Chanel. Being taken to the pictures, and in all those movies, it was always Christmas, and it was always perfect. Seven brides for seven brothers, young at heart, all that heaven allows. But all, all are gone, the old familiar faces. And yet, time renders. Deceive the eye, deceive the heart. A valediction and an epitaph. Now, voyager, go forth to seek and find. But my eldest brother, lying in an army hospital in Leamington Spa, he will not go to war. He will be safe. Cometh the hour, cometh the man, cometh the Korean War.
Queen, Country, and the Civil List. And yet, all over the country, street parties were held to celebrate the start of the Betty Windsor Show. When the Golden Couple married in 1947, the following was lavished on the ceremony. Jewellery from other royals, a washing machine, a fridge, 76 handkerchiefs, 148 pairs of stockings, 38 handbags, 16 nightgowns, 500 cases of tinned pineapple, 10,000 telegrams, 2,000 guests, 5 kings, 7 queens, 8 princes and 10 princesses. And for the 10,000 pearls sewn onto her wedding dress, Her Majesty allegedly saved all her clothing coupons. <laughs> Even more money was wasted on her coronation, as yet another fossil monarchy justified its existence by tradition and deluded itself with the notion of duty. Privileged to the last, whilst in England's green and pleasant land, the rest of the nation survived on rationing in some of the worst slums in Europe. And in Bonnie Scotland, they gave Her Majesty a 21 hose salute or maybe they were just taking the piss. After Korea, Aoka and Mau Mau, India had gone, soon Africa would go, then Suez as a last hurrah, leaving only a fading memory of when most of the globe was red and Victoria was the first and only diminutive bourgeois imperatrix. Betty and Phil with a thousand flunkies. The trouble with being poor is that it takes up all your time. Willem de Kooning. The trouble with being rich is that it takes up everybody else's. After farce, realism. The heart that beats beneath the heart is tender, is not savage. It beats in time, though years apart, from struggle's silent marriage, of storm and stress, of quiet love, as when the lights begin to fall, and he just smiles as she just hums, a tune that fitted like a glove, that tapped its rhyme, still and small, into their room, when nightfall thrums, a kind of peace that soothes the heart and lets the years fall from naught and down as they shuffle off to bed, apart, then meet again beneath the Eiderdown. Oh, 
shiny and new A cottage that too can fill And we'll be pleased to be called The folks who live on the Someday we may be adding a wing or two, a thing or two. We will make changes as any family will. But we will always be called. who live on the hill Our veranda will command a view of meadows green the sort of view that seems to want to be seen grow up and leave us We'll sit and look at that same old view Just we two Baby and Joe Who used to be Jack and Jill The folks who like to be called What they have always been called The folks who live on the the waters of Babylon. There we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. And they that carried us away captive required of us a song, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. But how shall we sing in a strange land? Yeah, 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 yeah. And in an era when pop music was still demure, before Presley, before the Beatles, John, Paul, George and Ringo, not so much a musical phenomenon, more like a firm of provincial solicitors. When they are given the freedom of the city, Teddy Johnson and Pearl Carr, Dickie Valentine, Lita Rosa, Alma Cogan, sedate British pop, was screamed away on a tide of mersey beat and the witty lyric and the well-crafted love song seeming as antiquated as anti-macassus or curling tongs. After the rise of rock and roll, my interest in popular music waned, and as it declined, my love of classical music increased. Sibelius, Shostakovich, and my beloved Bruckner. Then, in my overwrought adolescent state of mind, I discovered Mahler and responded completely to his every overwrought note. And in classical music, they had such wonderful foreign names. Amy Schuart, Otto Klemperer, Elisabeth Schwarzkopf, Annalisa Rottenberger, Furtwängler and Munch, Knappetsbusch and Gauck, Robert Merrill and Jussi Bürling, the Pearl Fishers.
but there was still ballroom dancing, a staid as a funeral parlour, hectares of tulle, brill cream and the fishtail, accompanied by Victor Sylvester and his famous orchestral whine, as thin as a two-step, as quick as a foxtrot. Strong Ainsley Racecourse for the biggest event of the steeplechasing world, the Grand National. Even umbrella weather won't stop the crowds coming to this almost legendary racing classic. All of Britain listened to the Grand National on radios as small and brown as Hovis. Made bets, off course and absolutely illegal, but it was only once a year and a shilling win. So where was the harm? Sundew, ESB, early mist. Even Mum opened her purse for her annual little flutter and said... I really fancy queer times. Each way. Matuvu has a slight lead from Sundew as they turn away from the stands and back towards the 14 jumps they have to tackle again. Bob Danvers Walker, the voice of British Pathé. Michael O'Hare, Peter O'Sullivan, the voices of racing. Listening to their controlled excitement pouring through the wireless. And Queer Times, who cost his owner only 300 guineas, has won the national. A 12-length victory... Mum smiling at her small win, and those who've lost think, well, there's always next year. God willing. The 12th of July and the Orange Day parade through the city, winding their way towards Exchange Station and Southport to toast King Billy in a peruke and say, fuck the Pope and all those Fenian bastards whatever, whoever they were. And on the train coming home, slightly the worse for wear, howling at the papist moon. But no religious divide in my street, just quiet acceptance The Catholics did everything in mysterious Latin, while Protestants sang Jesus wants me for a sunbeam in plain, no-nonsense English. Although sometimes it felt as if one's entire world was one long Sunday afternoon. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. Then Mum or one of my sisters would say, let's have a day out next week. And the ensuing seven days were streaked and gilded. But you still had to wait. Those days, queuing was de rigueur, queuing modestly for modest entertainment at the local fete in posh parts of the city, like Stonycroft, where they sounded their H's and knew what sculleries were. A jumble sale, a fancy dress parade, a foot race, with someone collapsing of heat stroke because the temperature rose a couple of degrees above freezing. The scouts, darts, and a May Queen crowned a nation deprived of luxury, relishing these small delights. Decorated prams and bicycles, a smattering of applause, all the fun of the fair. So, to New Brighton, only a ferry ride away, but happiness on a budget. They board in black and white, then disembark in color, for things were changing. World War II was over, peacetime and hardship eased. And all day on the beach, completely unsupervised, with no factor 200 sunblock and safe as houses, little baby Joyce, Tarquin and Gemma being as yet unknown. Stiff at joy time with Auntie Lil. Bathing beauty competitions, in their day harmless, now as quaint as the bustle, now as unacceptable as Chinese foot binding. Pretty young women being kissed by the Lord Mayor, given a sash, a trophy, and some small, modest fame. And oh, how we laughed. A stroll along the prom, 
deck chairs and the floral clock. Sand and the egg sandwiches. Tier three, then a snooze. New Brighton Rock as sweet as sick and gobstoppers that would last until your middle age. A ride or two, then the miniature railway. Then maybe to the dance, maybe a jive, maybe a gin and orange, and maybe love. Kiss me quick and roll me over, announce an engagement, plan a wedding. Taffeta skirts and blue surge, youth that cannot end, hopes as high as Blackpool Tower, when all the world was young and knew no bounds. Then the journey home, tired, cocoa and toast, and happiness unlimited. The golden moments pass and leave no trace. Trek off. had hoped for paradise. We got the Anus Mundi.
Surely thou shalt rise. But not before the opening of the Metropolitan Cathedral of Christ the King, inaugurated by Cardinal Heenan in his brand new frock. The Vatican's response to Schiaparelli. I had lived my spiritual and religious life under Popes Pius XII, John XXIII, and Clitoris the Umpteenth, which is enough to turn anyone pagan. As far as I knew, Holy Mother Church still wanted me, but I no longer wanted her for I was now a very happy, very contented, born-again atheist. Thank God. Oh, come all ye faithful, have another plateful.
municipal architecture, dispiriting at the best of times, but when combined with the British genius for creating the dismal, makes for a cityscape that is anything but Elysian. to see the dawn wind wrinkles and slides. I am here or elsewhere. In my end is my beginning. We meet our destiny on the road we take to avoid it. Carl Jung. I said to my soul, be still and let the dark come upon you, which shall be the darkness of God. I said to my soul, be still, and wait without hope, for hope would be hope for the wrong thing. Wait without love, for love would be love of the wrong thing. There is yet faith, but the faith, the love and the hope are all in the waiting. The rest is not our business. At the still point of the turning world, suspended in time between pole and tropic. And all is always now. Home is where one starts from. As we grow older, the world becomes stranger, the pattern more complicated of dead and living. There is a time for the evening under starlight, a time for the evening under lamplight, the evening with the photograph album. Love is most nearly itself when here and now cease to matter. I said to my soul, be still and accept this, my chanson d'amour, for all that has passed. But where, oh, where are you, the Liverpool I knew and loved? Where have you gone without me? And now I'm an alien in my own land. O oh, tempora, O oh, mores, O oh, the times, Oh, the fashions. Tread gently, stranger, as you softly turn the key to unlock time and cause the years to fall towards their end. Speak low, love, but speak wisely, for frail time hangs by a thread above the world with only hope to keep us safe. Tap lightly at the door, then close it with a silent shock. But never, ever, Yield to the night.
we shall return with hope to the good earth. And you, my dear children, you are the earth. But, I reason, earth is short and anguish absolute, and many hurt. But what of that? I reason we could die. The best vitality cannot excel decay. But what of that? I reason that in heaven somehow it will be even some new equation given. But what of that? shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and to know the place for the first time. Through the unknown remembered gate, when the last of Earth left to discover is that which was the beginning, a condition of complete simplicity costing not less than everything. And all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. If all the world and love were young, and truth in every shepherd's tongue, these pretty pleasures might me move to live with thee and be thy love. But time drives flocks from field to fold, when rivers rage and rocks grow cold, and Philomel becometh dumb, the rest complains of cares to come. The flowers do fade, and wanton fields to wayward winter reckoning yields. A honey tongue, a heart of gall, is fancy's spring, but sorrow's fall. Thy gowns, thy shoes, thy beds of roses, thy cap, thy kirtle, and thy posies, soon break, soon wither, soon forgotten, in folly ripe, in reason rotten. Thy belt of straw and ivy buds, thy coral clasps and amber studs, all those in me no means can move to come to thee and be thy love. But could youth last and love still breed, had joys no date nor age no need, then those delights my mind might move to live with thee and be thy love. We are being gathered in at gloaming. Is it sleep or is it death?
Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. Good night.